Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Immuno Project. We here at the Immuno Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to uh, education, infor information, uh, inspiration, guidance, advice to uh, Noahides, uh, the Bnei Noach, the converts to Judaism, and for uh, Bali Shiva, Jews who are returning uh, to God and uh, Judaism and an observant life. And I am reminded of a conversation I had uh, last year with a very perceptive young lady. And we were uh, discussing an odd uh, juxtaposition in a verse in Deuteronomy. And as those of you who follow uh, the videos here at amuna.com know, I'm all about unusual wordings, unusual juxtaposition when things just don't sound right. So the very perceptive young lady points out uh, uh, verses in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 15 and 17. This is the commandment to have honest weights and measures. If you're uh, uh, dealing, selling, you ha your weights and measures have to be honest. You can't be selling a pound of something and it's really three quarters of a pound. You know, you can't be uh, selling a, a yard of fabric and it's really only like 30 inches. It's got to be honest. And the verse says, a perfect and honest weight shall you have. And the passage ends with, remember what Amalek did to you. Zachor, remember. Asher asa lecha Amalek. So the very perceptive young lady said, what does honest weights and measures have to do with Amalek? If someone's trying to swindle somebody in the marketplace and selling him, uh, you know, four pounds of fish when he wants five pounds of fish, what does that have to do with a malik, the person we're supposed to remember and 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 at the same time obliterate his memory? And of course, I said, you are not the first person to ask this question. It was Rashi who explained the juxtapositioning of these two concepts, the honest weights and measures and um, the remembering Amalek. Um, it says, one who does not mean integrity, maintain integrity in the marketplace, should fear um, and be concerned with the retribution that Amalek received that is going to come on himself. And she said, what? <laughs> what is, again, what that, you're not, you're not telling me anything. I then went on. Uh, Rav Simcha Bunim explains Rashi's comment. Somebody who cheats and swindles in the marketplace, who doesn't give proper measurements, proper weights, that person lacks emuna, faith, and bitachon, trust in God. He lacks faith in God, and uh, trust in God, and, and God, and He demonstrates this by His uh, by His uh, unethical dealings. Um, one must believe unequivocally um, that the Creator will sustain him, and support him, and provide for his needs, and Hashem will provide. He will determine what you need, and uh, and you'll get it. So again. The very perceptive lady says, what does this have to do with Amalek? And says, remember the, the battle of Amalek, the battle against Amalek. Moses would stand on a hill and he would raise his hands. And whenever Moses raised his hands, the Israelites did well. They fought valiantly and uh, they were winning. When Moses got tired and his hands lowered, they didn't do so well. Amalek was winning. And so, um, Hazal say that it wasn't really Moses' arms going up and down that, that determined things. It was the Israelites' ability to focus on the, uh, the task at hand, battling Amalek, that was the inspiration, but that was that was it was their ability to focus on Hashem, focus on God, and focus at the task at hand, and to and to keep that uh, solidly um, in their mind. 
the Battle of Amalek, the ongoing Battle of Amalek for the last 3,500 years, is us resisting the pressure to, to, and the temptation to do evil. That is our battle um, with Amalek. Um, and to concentrate on our real source of sustenance, the Creator, someone who lacks amuna, someone who lacks faith, and bitachon, trust in God, faith in God and trust in God, that person is tempted to rely on cheating and stealing in order to sustain himself. Because he obviously doesn't believe that, that the, the Creator will, uh, uh, will provide. Uh, fraud will be his, like, his partner, his best friend. Um, he will resort to a life of theft and deceit. And he will seek a livelihood uh, in a manner that does not befit uh, a God-fearing Jew or any religious person. No hides, I'm talking to you. Um, this is a concept that uh, many can relate to. If things are going bad and the temptation to, okay, you're going through a, uh, you're going to a, a grocery line and the, uh, the cashier forgets to uh, swipe something and you're ahead by a couple of bucks. You got to go back. You got to uh, give the money. You got to be honest in your dealings. As a, the Torah passage deals with someone who's a vendor, but it has its ramifications on the other side as well. Someone who's meticulous in his mitzvah observance and then. Uh, plays fast and loose with ethics when it comes to business dealings or any other uh, transactions, that's, uh, that person missed it. He misses the point. Um, let us learn a lesson from this, that the Torah and ultimately Hashem does not distinguish between spiritual matters and how we behave in day-to-day -day life and in business matters and in transactions with friends, customers, uh, clients, uh, business partners. Ethics is ethics. You're expected to hold yourself to a high standard. And that is that faith and trust in God will sustain us. And that why, that's why weights, honest weights and measures uh, is connected to Amalek and the battle against the Mamalik, and the constant battle against the Mamalik that we must do every day. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imono Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.